Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and first of all, thank you to all of my subscribers and to Sanama Harelli as always for continuing to be a great encouragement for our channel. Also, to those of you who have yet to subscribe, if you're just now passing by, please tap the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and let us know that you appreciate our videos. We love you very much, and also giving us a thumbs up is your reciprocation that you love us as well. We're continuing with Equipping the Saints, and I will be following up in the book of Esther. We will take up with the book of Job. I have not completed our discussion on the weapons found in the book of Job, the spiritual weapons, but I've been led to discuss with you the book of Esther and with regard to spiritual weapons. As a reminder, the Bible states we war not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So you're not wrestling against uh, uh, the flesh. You're not wrestling against people, but the evil forces that may drive some people to try to harm you and your loved ones, your life, your marriages, etc. So in discussing the book of Esther, I would like to point out the fact that it is a great depiction of the relationship between Christ and the church. So Esther's relationship with the king Xerxes is a, a depiction uh, for us in our modern day times of Christ's relationship with we, the church. So let's take it up from Esther chapter 3 and verse 8, where Haman, he was an enemy of the Jews, and he wanted to essentially annihilate the Jews. So in verse 8 of chapter 3, we read, then Haman said to King Xerxes, there's a certain people dispersed and scattered among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom whose customs are different from those of all other people and who do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. If it pleases the king, let a decree be issued to destroy them and I will put 10,000 talents of silver into the royal treasury for the men who carry out this business. Okay, so Haman is making an appeal to the king to unite with him and to agree that the Jews will be annihilated. And so we go on to chapter 4 and verse 15 where it states, Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Okay, so this is a great example of how we, the church, are to fast and pray for our nation. We're to fast and pray for the world. We're to fast and pray for God's holy nation, we, the church, the bride of Christ. And it is quite apparent that a virus, and we, we Christians know that there is an evil entity behind that virus that would love to annihilate and er eradicate from this world all Christians, not just Christians, but everyone, any and everyone. Satan is not discriminatory when he he launches his, his evil uh, forces. He just uh, lashes out and launches, launches his weapons against any and everybody. And so in response to this, the Bible says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. So, and we can see Esther's awesome example of fasting, taking on a three-day fast where she ate nothing, she drank nothing, and those with her uh, also did the same. So it is essential during times as uh, such as this that we've been going through with this, this wicked virus 
that we who are able and who are led by the Holy Spirit, we take up that three-day fast. Take up that three-day fast. You're, if you're not accustomed to fasting, uh, start uh, conditioning your body so that you can take up a three-day fast as Esther did and so that you can defeat some of these evil and wicked deeds that Satan is, is ordering his entities to carry out in the land. So let's move forward in the uh, book of Esther, chapter 8, uh, verse 7. King Xerxes replied to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew. Mordecai was Esther's uncle, and he raised her. And because Haman attacked the Jews, I have given this estate, his estate, to Esther. And they have hanged him on the gallows. Now, Haman ordered that a gallows would be constructed, okay, and, and to hang the people. Also, and to, actually to hang Mordecai, wanted Mordecai to be hung on the gallows. Instead, the king ordered that Haman, the, the, that evil, wicked man, that he was hung on that gallows instead. Verse 8 of chapter 8 states, Now write another decree in the king's name in behalf of the Jews as seems best to you, and seal it with the king's signet ring. For no document written in the king's name and sealed with his ring can be revoked. Now, I discussed with you in a previous video about uh, using the, the signet ring of Almighty God when you're doing your spiritual warfare to seal your decrees. Because the Bible says when you decree a thing, it shall be done. Well, you want to make sure that that decree is irrevocable, just as Esther did. And, and I told you that I would give you my reference for, for this ability to use the Lord's signet ring. Again, the book of Esther is a very a good example of how we are to approach the Lord, how we are to pray, how we are to conduct our spiritual warfare. And we even have the right to use God's signet ring because he's given us the right to sit on the throne of Jesus with him. We're seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus and so we want to take every advantage that he's given us, even the use of his signet ring in conducting our spiritual warfare. And so you see that in Esther chapter 8, verses 7 through 8, where it discusses the king's signet ring. Okay, verse 11 of chapter 8. The king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves, to destroy, kill, and annihilate any armed force of any nationality or province that might attack them and their women and children and to plunder the property of their enemies. The day appointed for the Jews to do this is in all the provinces of King Xerxes was the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so that the Jews will be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers riding the royal horses raced out, spurred on by the king's command, and the edict was also issued in the citadel of Susa. Now those couriers are symbolic of, yes, you guessed it, the angels. And that wasn't hard to figure out. So they obey God's bidding uh, through our mouth. They obey the word of God, okay? So you want to make sure that you've met up to the qualifications of being able to utilize the word of God and his power because he, the Bible says, as I stated in a previous uh, verse of scripture, what right do the wicked to have to take up my covenant on their lips? So you want to make sure that you've met up to those requirements of obedience so that you can utilize God's weapons of warfare, his word, in combating and annihilating and killing your spiritual enemies. We're not talking about physical enemies. We're talking about your spiritual entities that come to steal, kill, and destroy you, your life, your loved ones. All right? Okay, the Bible says, my people must worship me in spirit and in truth. So this is a spiritual thing. I reiterate, don't go out there and buy guns and weapons to annihilate anybody. You're going to your prayer closet, to your private room, to your personal time with the Lord. You're going to fast and pray. You're going to utilize God's word. Ask for guidance in your prayer. I did research on spiritual warfare weapons 
uh, many years ago, uh, perhaps eight to ten years ago, and uh, I believe the Holy Spirit reminded me of that uh, research that I did, and I questioned, where did I put my research, all those weapons that I wrote down, and thankfully, I was led to my prayer closet. I have an actual prayer, prayer closet, and I'll take you there one day. And in one of my books, my concordances, I had all the pages. Praise the Lord. So I will be sharing them with you. I researched and found approximately 125 weapons of warfare. And I told you they are free. There is no charge for these discussions that we're having for this vital information. It is gold that I'm handing over to you. I have actually written down some of the uh, scripture verses where the weapons are found, and I will be providing those to you as well. You want to ask God to lead you and guide you by the power of his Holy Spirit in your prayer times. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you again on Friday. Peace in Jesus' name.